program that engages political developments and of course x-ray some happenings within our polity. My name is Shakir Suleiman and I'm the platform this evening. Uh, we are looking at uh, security but then we're looking at uh, those making or the allegations of people making political capital out of uh, the security challenge we are facing in this country. Now the killing of uh, innocent lives. Um, it is not gainsaying the fact that uh, Nigeria is facing a huge, if you like, uh, internal security crisis from the Boko Haram insurgency to the farmers hardest clashes to the kidnappings that are ongoing and armed banditry among several others. Now, these are security challenges that have been undermining uh, the actual development, if you like, uh, of our nation, Nigeria. Now, security challenges in this country have also made it extremely difficult uh, for uh, people to live uh, you know, together, and of course, peacefully. In most cases, people are finding it extremely difficult to even uh, go about their normal uh, routines. At the villages, farmers are finding it difficult to go to the farms because they because of the fear of being kidnapped or you know being killed by uh, bandits, and also even within the city centres, people are finding it um, extremely difficult also to move around without necessarily being uh, apprehend apprehensive of the possibility of being kidnapped by armed groups. Well, those are challenges uh, that the, co the country is facing at the moment, but then. Uh, the leadership, uh, as we all know, is also um, doing its best to tackle some of these challenges. Uh, politicians and authorities alike have been, um, to some extent, exchanging um, banters, if you like, now talking about uh, alleging or, or pointing accusing fingers on each other uh, each time there are security issues like this. Now, to the ruling class or the authorities concerned, the overwhelming security challenges to a very large extent are being fueled by uh, those they see as uh, wanting to have something to say about the government's inability to tackle these challenges. Again, the opposition political class in most cases are also making capital, if you like, out of this crisis. Uh, each time there are campaigns, it is about insecurity. But the fundamental question is, why is it difficult for both parties now to come together and address the problem, since it is a national uh, problem, it's a national challenge? Uh, this is our talking point on Inside Politics this evening, and I will be joined by, or rather I'm already joined by uh, two gentlemen who together will be looking at this uh, issue very closely. Now, I'm joined by a legal practitioner talking about barista Sule Iko Sani Sami holds the LMD title. He's a Kaduna based legal practitioner and has been joining us severally to talk about some issues of national concern. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, also joining us for the discussion this evening is a retired army chief talking about uh, uh, retired uh, General Muhammad Kabir Kaladenchi. A security aspects who has also been talking about uh, security challenges and providing solutions to how best mm -hmm. it can be tackled. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Richard. Yes, uh, from Benue to Zamfara, from Zamfara to Plateau, from Plateau to Taraba, the situation is almost the same. <laughs> talking about, you know, killings of innocent uh, lives. And um, of course, in all of this, ordinary Nigerians who um, have, are helpless, if you like, uh, are the ones that are victims of this crisis. Um, but each time there are crises, as I said, there is always allegations and counter allegations, accusing fingers, accusations and counter accusations. Let me start with um, Barista Sule Iko. Um, recently, there were altercations between the Benue State Governor Samuel Otom, uh, who 
has now defected from the APC to the PDP, um, and the national chairman of the APC, all talking about the security challenges that has bedeviled a uh, Bedouin state. Now, each point, pointing an accusing finger on the other, uh, saying that uh, he might have one way or the other of knowing what was going on uh, in terms of the security challenge in, in that state. Now, there are people who happen to be on the same platform, that is the APC before now, and are coming to tell us that uh, the security challenge we've been facing or that has been happening in that state, to some extent, has its root to those within the corridors of power. How are you taking that? Well, uh, first of all, I want to say good evening to the viewers. Before talking about insecurity, as I said earlier in our previous programs, there is need for people to be reminded of history. Because nothing happened without having a historical affiliation. First of all, insecurity has bedeviled not only Nigeria, not only Africa and across the world, even in Europe and America, we suffered insecurity. But in Nigeria, nobody will give credit to anybody that sat and presided over removing the responsibility of traditional institution into the constitution. What I brought this is, we had a military government under President Babangida before traditional rulers in the village, in the world, if a guest come into the village, before 24 hours, the village head will know. And if it's something he will report to the district head, he report to the district head, even to the emir. But Ibrahim Babangida removed the emirs and traditional institutions without regard for them in the Constitution. From that time, we started facing the problems of insecurity because the village head or a district head or emir will not have, don't have the mandate to see you and say, please, where are you doing here? What did you come to do? The next thing is they will say freedom of association, freedom of movement, you cannot ask questions, even when you observe people are malangry. That is one side. Going to the venue issue, we don't just hold individual responsible for an issue. We have to put the analysis on the table and pick them one after the other for the good security and development of our people. When Autumn came into power, into the APC as governor of Ben State, we all knew Autumn was in PDP. He has been searching for the ticket to be governor of Ben State in PDP. But because of his relationship with Senator Mark, and David Mark, as we all know, is the leader of PDP in Benue, and knowing who Autumn is, because according to them, why they deny him ticket is they know Autumn does not have the capacity and he is not a fit and proper person to be governor of Ben Wasted. So he came around. Well, that has not been a problem with the APC. Don't, I'm coming to that. Oh, okay. He now came to George Akume, telling George Akume because he is a TV man, Mark is a Idoma man. They want to show that because he's a TV man, Mark hated him because he's a TV man. He brought all sorts of tribalism and convinced Akume that he's going to be a law-abiding citizen, he's going to be honorable, he's going to behave well. To the conviction of Akume as a gentleman, he accepted him and they filled him in as the APC gubernatorial candidate. Unfortunately, he introduces the idea of enacting anti grazing law. In this part, I have been saying it severally. 
you don't expect whatever we are doing, irrespective of whoever is watching us, knowing or not known, God is the last Georgia. I'm coming to a point, please. Well, Let me make a yeah, point. We are talking drive, us, drive the point. We are drive. driving into an issue of security. Drive the point. So we should be allowed mm. to explain mm. issues in full mm. so that outside there, mm. who will not be interpreted? Mm. Understand? Mm. When he came in and introduces the idea to the State Assembly that he wants to enact an anti grazy law. Anybody that knows the history of Benue, he know Benue, it is a savanna, it is a good place for grazing. TV and Fulani have been living together in Benue State for over 100 years, peacefully. He said he want to enact an anti-grazing law. He even now introduces those anti-grazing army or anti-grazing police. Rangers in the state in the forest, state. Forest so for me, mm. I will have advice that not the president, mm. the national security advisor, mm. ought to advise Otom. At what stage now? Because this Be while I'm coming, please, uh, I say we are talking okay. on security. Okay. Let me make my points clear. Drive the point. I'm not doing it for any political reason. I understand. Just I say the fact as it is. Mm. National Security Advisor is, a, is a responsible in advising the nation and the president on issues of security. Because if a state enacted a law that is tantamount to peace and unity of a country, the state does not have army, the state does not have the police, the state cannot enforce any law. It is the duty of the National Security Advisor to tell the governor, this is your law, hold it on. We are looking into it. But to the best of my knowledge, I don't know, maybe it has been circulating in the media, I have never seen any advice for Autumn to hold on with his law. After that, after enacting that law, I heard Autumn begging that please let them help him enforce the law. Let them help him enforce the law. In this regard, the National Security Advisor ought to quickly advise Autumn because that is a bad law. On the, that wait. Is by all estimates. No, no, it's a, any law that will stop the movement of people and their, uh, and their goods in a, a particular area of this country. It is a bad law. So after place? that, I'm coming to the last point. Please. After enacting that law, mm. he chose to introduce the anti-grazing soldiers. Is it soldiers? What together? Well, just to implement it. Enough. Just to implement for himself. And you understand, from there, we started having this problem. So for a governor to think he can be law unto himself, above the federal government, above the interests of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, if it was some presidents, maybe Obasanjo, Autumn would have been removed from office. How can, because well, how can he be removed? He is exercising his fundamental uh, responsibility as a government. Okay. He is the chief security officer of his state, and there is a security issue at hand, and he felt this is the best way to handle it. Um, they promulgated a law, the State Assembly promulgated a law, which um, uh, by extension, uh, you know, be became, I mean, an act, a, a bill, which uh, subsequently became a law. And the, the, the governor signed it uh, into law. To, 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 to protect, if you like, or to regulate the activities of, uh, 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 um, what do you call them now? The, 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 the grazing. Yes, the, there is the, this particular. The farmers. The, the, the headsmen. Yeah, the, the headsmen. But then there's a particular word I wanted to use here. Um, talking about, uh, well, uh, let's go on. Now, the, the essence is to regulate the activities of, of the herders who open, uh, were often accused of uh, moving into farmlands and, of course, threatening, I mean, creating problems. What's wrong with a governor doing that in the, for the sake of security in the state? Uh, the, the, uh, you see, 
uh, let me just take the topic first out of uh, this. Thing. I think yeah. I, I think uh, I love I love the topic you brought out, uh, making capital out of killings, yeah. and uh, in your introductory remarks, you really showed that there are security issues in the countries. Whether you are talking about uh, the attacks on individuals the uh, people who are being abducted and the uh, ransom is being looked for, uh, people are being killed in churches and this and that. Now, <coughs> what are we looking at? Do people look at these issues, the security issues, and um, make a cap political capital out of this, yes. which I will I would want to say it is, it is very true okay. and um, very true in the sense that let's go back to the Benway, uh, my brother Barista yes. Sani Sani mm -hmm. talked about. If you look at, uh, there were, uh, what do you call it, uh, a lot of claims of attacks by one group over another group, this and that, this and that which there are some social media uh, that are being sponsored by some people. There are some political heavyweights that will go to these places instead of them to come down and, 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 and manage the situation. They, they only continue to uh, hammer on the issue. Yes. Uh, you understand? So, so it. now hyping it, hyping it. Now, the issue of Benue when a church was attacked, two pastors were killed, this and that. Is, is I think the even the culprits have been uh, sentenced already. Yeah, he, it has he, shown he, us that probably people might do might not actually be directly sponsors mm -hmm. of a particular security challenge. But when it happens, instead of them to show their humility and show us that they are leaders mm -hmm. within our system. And, and take, tell their people to calm down, they will go and talk for those who are responsible. The end of, instead of doing that, coming out on the papers and whatever, mm. and shouting that their people should carry arms and whatever. At the end of the day, people were arrested. Mm. And um, it, was, it, it came to pass that the, 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 the direction at which these people wanted the citizen to look at it is is is, is different. So I, and you I, see I a lot of yeah. Are you saying in this is that you, you, in this studio, mm -hmm. I had a privilege of um, I don't know whether it was for a program or another, but to, was sitting down with somebody from Zampara State. Some of us believe that whatever is happening in Zampara has connection with what is happening at Brunungwari Agus. It has connection with what is happening in up to Lokoja area, in Niger, Lokoja area. Mm -hmm. And we believe that uh, there are pointers mm -hmm. to show that the people who are being defeated in the northeast and Sambisa forest mm -hmm. are probably infiltrating into that area. Yes. But instead of that person as a political leader mm -hmm. to sit down and meet the people in government in Zampara State. No matter how bad you feel about the leadership of the person who is in that position, to sit down and come together and see how do we um, get get out of this and find a solution. To it. You understand? So, 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 so the question is: the person is just talking about how to destroy the image of that person because he believes that that is only a way of getting political sympathy. capital out, uh, sympathy out of it. Okay, but, but then how, how do you think it is possible for, because just like you rightly mentioned, uh, the national chairman of the APC has, you know, made some revelations or uh, cited some examples, some of the reasons why he felt that the present administration in Benue State has some case to answer. He talked about how some of those very close to the governor, though he didn't mention it, but then people understand that uh, even the recent arrests, uh, especially the one that has to do with the 
the, the Ghana, you know, who, mm -hmm. who happen to be uh, on the payroll of the mm -hmm. state government, uh, working along that uh, uh, guard, livestock guard, uh, as they, they are called, um, has something to do with, with some of the people. You see, you, you see, like the barista was saying, mm -hmm. you see, Ghana mm -hmm. himself was a thug to the previous government, mm -hmm. which at the beginning, when autumn came to power, they were, they were using Ghana, the opposition were using Ghana to make uh, the state ungovernable for him. Yeah, that, that Can you understand? So yeah. now, mm. the man now has power, mm. and he needed to curtail those things. So the, the, politically, he brought the person now close to him, gave him, I think, appointment to be collecting task as chairman, uh, yeah. chairman or something to collect yeah. tax for the this in, yeah. for the state whatever at the end of the day mm. the person again went here with now let me tell you our number one problem in Nigeria is that this issue about religion mm. sentiments of religion and tribe are becoming so much integrated into our mm. the, our leadership uh, style by a politician. Benue, Taraba, Plateau, uh, some part of Kaduna, Nasarawa. Mm. Every day when you hear a crisis in that place, mm. it's trying to instigate because the 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 the, the, high, the number of people there mm. who are of the Christian faith mm. are more. You will find out that whenever something happens in that place, mm. before you even have the simplest thinking of understanding what is going on, somebody starts going about Given saying that God, ethnic orientation, yes. and that one goes with the religious aspect of it. Mm. If you look at Burnungwari, uh, uh, what do you call it, Zampara, uh, up to uh, well, Niger, it has stopped a bit, mm. but it, it it used to be from. Mm. Burnungwari, up uh, through Shiroro, mm -hmm. up to you are up and part of uh, Koji State. Right. But you you find out that because of the political uh, uh, intonation of it, it is more resident in Kaduna and uh, Zampara. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something that people must understand. Okay. You see, mm -hmm. if you look at Kanu. Katsina, mm. uh, Sokoto, Brinkebi, mm. which are all parts of Northwest. Mm. You find out that, why is it that this is stealing people for money and whatever? Why is it not happening? Because there is more money in Kanu mm. than in Kaduna, when it means stealing somebody to make money. Mm. Now, what really happened is that if you look at Zampara and Kaduna, mm. most of the political, uh, what do you call it, Gladiator. uh, gladiators, mm -hmm. are actually from the same party. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's but, a party. But is it, is now, it, what is happening is that mm -hmm. if you look at Kano, Jigawa, uh, Katsina, and this and that, they actually have only one person that is the focus of the opposition. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately for them, if you look at uh, Jigawa, Sila Labido. Mm -hmm. If you look at Kano, uh, uh, yeah. so these people, by the governments that are in that are in the states, mm. have managed to clip their wings. But in Kaduna and Zampara, mm. those people who are causing, who, who will have well, been using this, good. They there are so many, and they they have not been caught. Yes. Now you're talking about political party, uh, you know. Before now, um, the governor of Benue State was from the APC. And of course, uh, the, the security challenge in Benue State was seen to have been handled you know, uh, by both the state and the federal government. Now, several times, Otom has uh, rushed to, to the presidency to tell the president uh, you know, about things that, I mean, the, 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 the level of insecurity in the state and wanting the federal government to intervene. And the federal government has intervened severally. Now, by even deploying the IG uh, and, and several other uh, top military, I mean, uh, yes, military and, 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 and police chiefs. But, uh, surprisingly, with all of these allegations coming now from the APC top leadership, um, some are beginning to wonder 
why is it coming now when uh, this governor has defected to the, to the PDP? Why are we not talking about uh, possible involvement of government or lapses on the part of government when he was in the APC? Yes. Uh, before I go to this question, I would want to correct your I want to correct your first your impression before General started talking mm. that Autumn is a governor, is the chief security officer, mm -hmm. so he is can. He not? Uh, uh, please, okay. you should allow me okay. to talk. How Go can ahead. we be talking together? Go ahead. He is the first security chief security officer mm. of the state. He is the he is the governor. Mm -hmm. He have the right to enact law for the peace, unity, and good governance of his... No. Law are not enacted that way. In as long as a law that will be enacted in a state will be tantamount to the overwhelming interests of the people and the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that law is repugnant. Nobody have that right to... To, to just enact any law as he why wishes. Is that is that part. So before you enact a law, mm. you must make sure the law will not be as bad as that of Benway. Because it's bad. It was the what? badness. Ah, ah. Okay, go ahead. It was the badness of that law that led to the continuing killings that people are complaining about. And we are all complaining. Nobody wants to lose any. Well, the kill is only in Benway. No, not that. Uh, understand? People complain. Nobody will want to be an advocate of deaths. Die. People die. And nobody, any responsible politician, will not want to make relevance on the graves of the dead, which Autumn is doing. You are saying that... Uh, how, how, how can you justify that? I, I'm coming to that point. You are saying that Autumn, the national chairman of the APC, not only him, so many people have said... Otom had collected so many much money, like 20, 20 billion mm -hmm. for the security, mm -hmm. so many billions for the bailout, but he was unable to show it. Yes, it is the reason why Otom did come to PDP, because Otom has been having problems with the political godfather of Benue State, who is Senator George Akume. George Akume, when you watch George Akume, on channel television when he branched to Nasarawa on Friday before proceeding to Benue. He said his concern, if you go to any APC state, you will see infrastructure going, you see governors walking. But to the best of his knowledge, as a former governor and a serving senator, he has been going around the Benue state. He has not seen anything that is going on in, in Benue State. So for you to say, until when Autumn moved to PDP, that the APC leadership are complete, is not correct. So all the reason why, listen please, uh, uh, Shapiro. Mm -hmm. The reason why Autumn left APC mm -hmm. is because of his problems with Akume. And the reason why Akume have problem with him is because he's not up to the task. He, he is not that? doing, that, that is, that is what. Well, uh, in, in case you're just joining us, it's Inside Politics, and we're looking at uh, the topic, uh, making oh, political capital out of uh, the killings uh, in the country. But then we're, we're, we're basing on our analysis on some of the frontline states that are facing these security challenges. And I've been talking with Barista Tule Iko Tanisani and retired General Mohamed Kabir Garadin. So we'll take a short break. We'll be back in a short while. Please stay. The 2019 General Elections Women Aspirant Summit is a deliberate woman agenda where female aspirants running for various political offices 
in 2019 will gather in Abuja at a one-day summit to work together to strategize to win more elective positions. On, 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 on Tuesday, 31st July 2018, at Treasures Suites and Conference, Abuja, time 9 a.m., the 2019 General Elections Women Aspirant Summit is supported by UN Women, International Republican Institute, Australian High Commission, and, and, and Dana Air. The 2019 General Elections Women Aspirant Summit is organized by, by Women, Women Radio, Radio, WFM 91.7, the Nigerian Women Trust Fund and Women in Politics Forum. The 2019 General Elections Women Aspirant Summit, working together for 2019. Still inside politics, and we're looking at uh, the allegation of uh, some people making political capital out of the killings we're witnessing in this country. And I've been talking, as I said, with Barista Sunil Kusani Saimi and uh, retired General Muhammad Kabir Galagachi. Now, uh, we're still uh, on this altercation, if you like, and uh, 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 I mean, allegations and counter allegations. Now, going back to the, the, what, what, what the national chairman of the APC has said in that interview. He was actually um, looking at um, the amount of money, just like you, you said, um, uh, you know, being spent by the government without uh, in anything to show for it, as he said. But is it that is that enough for the people? I mean, for, for the governor uh, to now haven't haven't affected to the PDP use that as a, as as a yardstick or as a, as a selling point now to the people because. Some are looking at the crisis, the farmers had this crisis in, in Benue State as one thing that has occupied, if you like, or preoccupied the activities of the government in the last three years. Is, 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 it, is it enough for the government, for instance, to make capital out of that crisis without showing um, his scorecard? You see, if I am, if, 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 why I am talking confidently mm. about this issue, I am from Zulu. I am from Zulu Kebi State. In Zulu, we have Christianity. In Zulu, we have Christians, we are Muslims. In fact, I want to correct a particular um, a notion that the, of the, in, in Benue about, I think, two weeks ago, they organized a Makodi summit and mentioned Kebi South as part of those that are part of Middle Belt. No, it's a lie. We Zulu listed. We Zulu in Kebi said we can never part of the mess of that Makodi summit. Yes, I'm coming. I'm not for myself. We can never part of the hooligans. Understand? No, we don't have, um, uh, who? How can somebody to, mention to, my place as part of those that to, are that are agitating for a country? Well, Let, who, when you please allow me to make okay, my point. But we have to be civil uh, in our comments. They may, in, in Makodi summit. Mm. They say, Kebi South, Kaduna South. No, we in Kebi South, we are not part of that. In Zulu, we are Christians and Muslims. Mm. We have never had a problem. Mm. In Zulu, we have never conflicted interest. Because this is a Muslim, that is a Christian. No. When I hear Autumn and people of Southern Kaduna and those in Taraba Plateau, governors in particular, and some members in the National Assembly say they are marginalizing Christianity. I look at them as shameless. We Zulu, we are the only minority tribe in the old Sokoto state, which comprises of Zamfara and Kebi state, that we have Christian in large numbers. We have never fought anybody. We have never fought ourselves. We have never gone to the media to say, no, we people of Zulu, the Muslim of Kebi state, are marginalizing us. Or we Muslim, or we Christian of Zulu, the Muslim of Sokoto, Zamfara, and Kebi. No! 
We don't do that. We are from the same. Uh, we are from this. We are from the Kebi state. We are enjoying our relationship with the Christians, and Christians are enjoying our relationship with them. I wonder why somebody will just come up and say religion will be a yardstick for him to be condemning a particular government. Let me cite an example. Last time, when the campaign of Ikiti was going on, don't vote for APC. If you vote APC, well, where you, why are you? I have to cite the example. We are talking on the we national can, television, please. If you vote yeah. APC, you vote Hesman. If you vote APC, you vote Muslim. That is not a style. I'm advising the PDP. And when you come again talking about religion, then look at what happened in Barikal Lodge. Look at what happened in Benue. Autumn will say, yes, there are clear Christians. Now, for what I was seeing and reading, Isla, uh, court has passed a judgment for those that killed the two Catholic priests in Benue. Yeah. I want to draw the attention of my respected Christian leaders particularly the Catholic Church. I'm a Muslim. I attend Catholic Church programs. I'm a very, very good lover of the Catholic missions. The Catholics should please apologize to the president because when these priests were killed, they organized a rally all over the country. All over the country. Now that these people that are said to be the killers of these Catholic priests I learned they were convicted to death, and they are not Hesmen, and they are not even Muslims. Understand? So it's not good for anybody to think he can make capital politically out of killing, particularly by using religion. Yeah. We have Somebody advanced does. listing. Yeah. We have advanced that. We shouldn't be thinking that because now I'm an imam, I should gather up my followers and say, don't vote. No. We are no longer in the Stone Age. Okay. Even a primary school child but the knows not, what. Eh? The rallies were not respected to the killing of the bishop. They are talking about the need to address the insecurity. I I, I watch I I watched his deal with due respect. Let me if this is mm -hmm. a sensitive issue, please allow me to talk. What is in my mind? I don't want to be right, mis right misinterpreted, the please. Right the point. Yes, please. I don't want to be misinterpreted. Yeah. I listened to the Catholic with due respect to him that is speaking on behalf of the bishops. Mm -hmm. Understand? Mm -hmm. Of course he mentioned that not his, they are not only particular mm -hmm. about the killings of the Catholic priests, mm -hmm. but there has been killings mm -hmm. of both Christians and Muslims. Even the lady that was interviewing him on sunrise says, Mr. Bishop, mm -hmm. know that there has been killings, several killings mm -hmm. of both Muslim and Christian. He even says that he has extended the invitation of coming for that rally by the Muslim brothers. Okay. And he said, wait, and some Muslim brothers even attended. But I want to make a point. There was a bomb blast in Kano alone, in area of Kano Central Jumaat Mosque, that killed over 1,000 people. Reports recently in this year, there has been suicide attacks, severally in between Adamawa and Meduguri, that consummated minimum numbers of more than almost 500 to 1,000 persons. No Muslim come to demonstrate. Understand? So Nigeria belongs to everybody. Next, if Muslim can never continue to rule this country alone. Time will come very, very soon. After the president finishes eight years, 2023, by the grace of God, a Christian, uh, uh, a Christian will be president from 223 maybe to 231. So there is no need that because some people are amassing wealth illegally, trying to buy some couple of people for religious reasons and, and even make them to make statements that are derogatory in nature. So I want to advise my fellow senior compatriots, particularly the bishops and the Christian leaders, Politics can never continue to be headed by a Muslim leader in Nigeria. Time will come okay. when I, I hope I will be on this place by the grace of God, 
by 2023, President Buhari will hand over to a very good Christian president, inshallah. Yes, um, um, now, talking about making political capital out of killings. Uh, in whose interest? Because uh, some would say, uh, you know, it is inimaginable for one to begin to think that uh, uh, politicians, despite the fact that they have their own interests, would go so low or would go to the extent of failing crisis or sponsoring killings of their even kinsmen. How, how do you think, how can you absorb this? You, you see, the problem is because um, politics in Nigeria or in Africa mm -hmm. or to the black man is not a matter of serving the people. It is a matter of serving self. Mm -hmm. And um, the people who are into that, they think good or bad, mm -hmm. what is important is for them to be in a political office. Not, not minded. Not minded. That is a, so that is why the moment, is, look, what is happening to, uh, to President Buhari is, is not something that we have just started seeing. Okay. We have seen it during um, the Obasanjo's time. Mm -hmm. People who came out to, to say everything bad about him. And they are not only saying it because he, they, they, they believe in reality, what he is doing was wrong. It, they are saying it so that they can intimidate him to appoint them into a certain political office. So, unfortunately, maybe. unfortunately, our political class, uh, uh, of our political leadership, is such a way that people are more interested in themselves because they believe that whatever you, 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 uh, the resources that belongs to government, the moment you are in a political office. And that is why, before the coming of Buhari in government, even to appoint a minister, you find that there is a lot of political consideration, there is a lot of fight. Somebody, has, one person has been appointed from this senatorial district, so there is no way you can know you must appoint from this, whether he is the best person, this and that. But people don't understand that a minister is just an eye and probably an ear of the person that is elected to head that government. And should be served the interest of Good. the nation. So, no, 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 but, but, but you see, let me tell you, we cannot hold any minister responsible for anything. It's only because our political class have, have decided to use that as a means. Because if you have a minister of any information in Nigeria, he is whatever happens to information ministry, to us as ordinary citizens, we have nothing to do with Lai Mohammed. Because it is the president that we elected to take care of our information uh, uh, dissemination. But, but, but so when he appoints, this is what I'm telling you, if he appoints somebody, mm -hmm. that person is responsible to him, not to Nigeria. Why should it be so? Because he is serving the No, 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 no. The question is, you see, the person that is answerable to Nigeria is the person that Nigerians elected to run their government. Okay, talking now about political in the, appointment. Good. What I'm telling you, political appointment, you just call them political appointment just because they, they are people who are supposed to be politicians that are appointed based on what they have done. But in actual fact, they are not called political appointees. They are called public servants. Well, no. You understand? So mm -hmm. what, what I'm trying to say is that all this hyping of security and uh, you see people talking all sorts of things instead of sitting down to to find a solution i always give this example if you we are neighbor three of us and i come back from work at four o'clock in the evening and i find the three three of our children are fighting the way i was brought up i will separate everybody hold the, the hand of my child go inside the house and carry one kuboku and beat the hell out of him, Why? no matter how right he is. Without finding out what no, no matter how right. Look, my child has no reason to go out and fight. Whatever he is done to him, he will come back. When I come back, he will tell me, but look. So, the person, do so what, I'm what, trying, what I'm trying to tell you mm -hmm. is that if to say we have elders and political leaders that are responsible human beings, if there is today, if there is today, a crisis along Burnongwari, 
Kaduna Road and in Burungwari. Those leaders that are within that area, they will continue to keep the nerves of their yeah. citizens at an acceptable something. Mm. Then they will come out and be fighting to get those who are responsible to do. But here we are having a situation whereby mm. somebody will be sitting down in his house mm. to will create, will, will go and pay some young men to go and send a, 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 a something outside in the social media mm. to show that there is a crisis where there is no crisis. Well, in crisis. well uh, one other question I wanted to ask you, but it's time for us to uh, throw the line open because Nigerians want to make an input into the program, but I would have to come back to that question later. The numbers to call are on your screen now, 0803-0956-375, Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes, who is on the line? Yes, Comrade Anate from Trinity. Yes, Comrade, go ahead. Yes, it was unfortunate that this killing is giving religious toleration. Yes. I was uh, uh, on the TV. Right. I saw Christian community that demonstrate in Patapos. They said the killing should stop the system. It, 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 that demonstration implies, implies that only Christians are being killed. I mean, victims of this most of them are Muslim. Most of the victims of this killing mm. were Muslim. Mm. You see, in Zamfara, they were Muslim. In Kano, they were Muslim. Zigawa, uh, uh, Borno. Mm. I mean, all these killings were killed Muslim. Mm. All the Muslims. And I, uh, uh, it's unfortunate that young people come out and say they are killing Christians, Christians, Christians. Yeah, given. That's what I said. Well, so, so you're aligning with uh, Barista. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Anna. Uh, uh, hello, hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. SMB, okay. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, you see, uh, just do. Let me, let me just give you some credit. The internal security issue is the police responsibility. Because unfortunately, and then, uh, that we are where we are today. Uh, let me recommend the former ID that is, uh, uh, Abu Bakr Diko, who has said that the, the, the police force must take their responsibility during this time. And they did very well there. But how, yes. So, Yes, you can't, you can't do business this way. 
Okay, uh, one more caller and then come back to you. Uh, SAB has said something I want you to respond to uh, later on. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello, good evening. Hello. We are listening to you. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes, who is on the line? Uh, are you hearing me? Yes, very loud and clear. What's your name? You are listening to a TV. Yes, you want to. When you listen to a TV. You can do two things at a time. Uh, you have to either talk to us or continue watching us on TV. Uh, you can do. Hello, good evening. Oh, another one. Hello. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello, good evening. Hello, Ahmed. Thank you Ahmed, from where? Good evening. Turn down your TV. Sorry, what's your name? I want to talk on the... On the Reduce your volume. Okay, what's your name? Yes. Uh, it's on this, uh, this political, political uh, uh, this hard issue. Uh, the issue. What I wanted to say is that we have to look at the That's your opinion. Sorry, we wouldn't want to be. Uh, we want you to go straight to the issue we are talking about. And uh, well, I think it's about time we, we have to uh, come to the end of the program. But uh, yes. uh, SMB was talking about the need, you know, uh, because the, the internal security issues, of course, are civil in nature, and of course, the civil authorities should take up the challenge. But it is obvious that the civil civil uh, civil authorities are ill-equipped. They are lacking the, the adequate manpower needed and, of course, the capacity to deal with the multiple challenges, internal security challenges. How do you think that can be, uh, I mean, taken uh, care of? I said it. The comrade also make a comment. Mm. The as we talk about the traditional institution, which I mentioned, yes. all those that contributed mm. to the deleting of traditional institutional responsibility in the Constitution, mm should come and explain to us before they die why they remove the names of the traditional rulers in the constitution. They should explain to us. Otherwise, Nigeria will continue to say we will not forgive them. The second one about the comrade that says the demonstration that happened in Portaco. Anything like that that happened in Portaco, I will not bother me. Because the criminal governor, Wiki, well, I take responsibility. No, it's no, a criminal. No, 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 we, Wiki we is a no, criminal. No, 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 we can't talk. We I can, take responsibility. Take because that. as uh, a governor, you cannot be instigating religious demonstration. But, but any governor, any listen, and who is Wiki? Wiki is, is, is Wiki is, well, is he is not an elected thing. governor. Uh, he has imposed well, governor. He's a criminal governor. Well, this is your your. Oh.